Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a very special presentation, Facebook Lead Gen on a Shoestring Budget. This webinar is brought to you by Startup Socials and Promodo today. Startup Socials is a global community of entrepreneurs built to connect and empower people in the startup ecosystem. You can learn more about Startup Socials by visiting www.startupsocials.com. Promodo is an online marketing global agency specializing in search engine optimization, PPC, conversion rate optimization, and UX, with offices in Ukraine, Russia, and the UK. I'm Vasil Azar from Nine Events Manager Business to Community, as well as uh, Global Director of Startup Socials. A few housekeeping reminders for today's webinar. It's been recorded, and you will receive a link within 48 hours of today's broadcast. If you have any questions for our speaker today, uh, for our wonderful speakers today, please post them in the chat box at the bottom corner of your screen. And if you would like to tweet key takeaways from today's webinar, use hashtag Startup Socials. I'm very excited to welcome a friend of mine, Dennis Yu, who is a Facebook marketing ex expert uh, and founder at Blitzmetric. He's an internationally recognized lecturer on Facebook marketing, and uh, he has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, LA Times, TechCrunch, Fox News, you name it. He's also an author at Inside Facebook and All Facebook. And without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Dennis. Dennis, please take it away. Thank you, Basile. All right, so I'm going to introduce Alex, but before we do, I thought I would try to embarrass people because B2B is normally a very dry kind of thing where people say, oh, it's not really possible to drive leads in social and you know, it's all about branding and mid-funnel and we get more results out of AdWords, right? And we love to see this because what it reflects is that it's not that the car doesn't drive, right? You see Google just launched their car yesterday. It's people don't know how to drive the car. They don't realize that in the world of Facebook there are all these techniques. So we only have a few minutes, so we're going to show you with real examples, not just a bunch of slides, how this is done. So if we look at Vasil, we see all this information about him. We know that he runs events here at Business to Community. We can target all the people who like Business to Community, who read Business to Community. We know that when there are articles like here on Business to Community, we can amplify this. When we amplify this in the news feed people have and where they work and the conferences they attend and the magazines they read and all of this, then it looks like Business to Community is promoting you. So I want to show you, this is Alex, right? Alex is writing for Inside Facebook, and because he is saying that he's the authority in social lead gen, we like to say he's been doing this for seven years. He started at the age of three. You've got article after article on this. This is how you demonstrate expertise, right? If you're doing B2B lead gen, what is the area of expertise that you have? Are you working at SAP and you're trying to drive social leads to a new product that you have? Or maybe you're working at a hotel chain and you're trying to reach conference organizers? Or maybe you know, you're doing some kind of esoteric niche industrial manufacturing piping kind of thing. Whatever that is, you need to become the expert here. So what Alex is going to show you is that there's a framework that you can follow. And the title of our thing, of course, is how to do this thing on a budget. You don't need a lot of software. You don't need a lot of money. You just need to follow this viral cycle, knowing what these goals are, having great content, targeting people that need to see it, the workplace kind of targeting, and then the it also is the conversion piece. I'd like to say he's the Tim Ash all together. You have to have these first three pieces here done before you can come in and amplify. So how does that work? Well, if you have third party credible expertise, not stuff on your website, not stuff that you say about yourself because you're the world leading whatever in a certain area, but you get referenced by the other people who are authoritative, you get traffic, you capture emails from that traffic, you do webinars with friends like Vasil and Paul, and you nurture these people over time. It takes a lot of time. And then they come in and they say, Alex is a Facebook ads legend, the end, he he. Right? I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of small. Right? You start to write for these magazines. You start to publish and demonstrate at conferences that you know what you're talking about. And you do it over and over and over and over and over again. And then you demonstrate at a large scale that you're able to do that for Marketo and for Infusionsoft. So we happen to do this for both of these guys and we speak at their conferences. Now how do you do that? When they come in, when we're on the stage and we tell the Marketo people, hey, with Marketo together we did this many do social at this cost 
the ultimate lead gen. Because then you're, it's not like buying a booth. It's not advertising in the magazine. It's not doing these kinds of things because you're putting this content out here and then you're stacking it at different points in the funnel. You've got all your content. You've got it organized. You have these metrics that are mid-funnel, right? End of funnel, top of funnel. You have marketing automation. You're collecting email addresses out of social. You have content magnets to get that information. Then all of a sudden, you've got a ton of credibility. So this was just a few months ago. This is Alex here in the light blue. This is Paul on the far left. This is myself. And this is our, our friend Jason who runs content marketing at LinkedIn. So when we get Jason Miller to say amazing things about us on LinkedIn, you know, or at these other places, then we have, we have huge trust. Right? Because you can see anytime he mentions us, oh, we can say pictures of, you know, just like proof. This is like boasting, right? It's like name dropping, right? Then all of a sudden they're, they're endorsing you, you're endorsing them, and then they're, you're able to produce this kind of content. You know, here we are, LinkedIn headquarters, all this kind of stuff, right? This is fantastic. Here we are drinking uh, Jack Daniels new whiskey they came out with, you know, whatever it might be, right? So you want to think about how you can do this, how do you make it fun? B2B is about, it, with social, is about that mid-funnel engagement, which is primarily in the collection of an email. And so we're going to go, like, for example, here, right? This is our webinar, Facebook, this one right now. Facebook lead gen on a shoestring budget. I go ahead and post it on the Blitzmetrics page, right? I post it, but then I can amplify this to all the people who read business to community. And it's very easy to do this, right? Are you doing this? We think that the most awesome thing is when you are doing workplace targeting, the whole media inception. And I'm going to be done in about 30 seconds and show you and pass it to Alex. But when you have this stuff here and you're boosting this to workplace targets, that's what B2B is all about. I would typically not choose newsfeed here, by the way, not that we're going to that level of detail, right? But if I come into here and I say, look, more demographics, work, employers, job titles, industry, think about this. This is stuff you have access to, by the way. This is not some special stuff. We have access to various things that you, know, you might not have, but this is something everyone has. So if I want to be seen in Mashable, I can target the people who work at these places, right? And this, this is absolutely killer. We do this all day long. If you're not doing this in B2B, look at how small these audiences are. People who work at the Wall Street Journal, people who work at LinkedIn. If we write an article about LinkedIn, if we write an article about a particular conference, if we, uh, whoever it is, right, we can target these people. We happen to work with Infusionsoft, right? We do their, their social lead gen. So we write an article about them, then we target this stuff here. And what's it cost to reach 50, 200 people? Almost nothing, maybe three or four bucks a day, right? Oh, I don't have any money. I, you know, you can spend three or four bucks a day. If you can't spend three or four bucks a day, oh, of course you can, right? Then there's no excuse. Oh, I don't have any time. You can do the same thing on Facebook and LinkedIn. So I'm super happy to pass it over to Alex. He is our CEO. I'm the CTO. I build a lot of the software. I speak a lot of geek stuff, but I'm going to pass it over to Alex, and he's going to show you what this framework is and then show you the materials that we produce just for you. It's the same stuff that we use for our own people. Cool. Thanks, Dennis. So we're going to cover the frameworks that we use to drive B2B leads on a budget. Like you saw, we drove 13000 Marketo at less than 30 bucks for B2B, and it was done through Facebook and through the content that they've produced. So we're going to head over to the slides. Here's just We have a, a poll for you just to get a feel for if you guys are running Facebook ads, and if so, how much. So go ahead and start filling out some of the responses so we can see where you guys are at so we can accommodate for what you have and what you guys are doing. So I'm going to skip on over to the next slide. So some are doing... So we'll skip through to the your mailing list because you need to tie social and and your email list all together, all in one place. So having a large email list and building that list is going to be important to be successful in social because you can upload that email list directly using Facebook's custom audiences. So it looks like about half of the people are saying they're using ads. And you can see here, most people have a list. What does that mean in, that in terms of social? For B2B. For B2B list will usually get a 20 to 30 percent match and it's higher inside of LinkedIn. So there's the opportunity to tie those in together. So I'm going to skip on to the third poll here and then how much traffic you guys are getting on your website. Okay. Per day. 
All right, so it looks like there's only a little bit of traffic from the, the results that I'm seeing here. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the results. And then looks like less than 100 visits per day. Okay. So we're going to for companies like Marketo and Infusionsoft, both B2B companies. We've driven thousands of leads for Infusionsoft. They have a small business CRM and marketing automation. And we drove that at less than 16 bucks a lead. So I'm going to head on over to this framework that we have. So at the very top, there's goals. So understanding the mission that you stand for, the content that you need to create to support that. So, at the, so right away, you need to know the business goal you're driving to and why you created the business, why, what you stand for, and then creating content to support that and demonstrating thought leadership. Dennis showed how we've been publishing inside Facebook, Facebook PPC, business to community, all of these places, external social endorsements in the places that demonstrate that you're an expert in your field and then amplifying that content to the right people. So showing that to people that work the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, LA Times, or even industry uh, publications, you can then push that out into the news. And then the last part is amplifying that to the right So making sure you have the people to hit. And you can do this for just a couple bucks a day. And amplifying that into the news feed to push out the message. And you need to follow a framework of audience engagement and conversion because the top and middle of the funnel are extremely important when driving B2B leads. And we've seen that for Marketo and Infusionsoft. They're producing definitive guides. They're demonstrating that thought leadership and expertise by publishing to their blogs, publishing to external places that point to them as the expert, making sure that you're posting often, tying in your email list inside of Facebook to build up the engagement. And then at the bottom of the funnel, when people are ready to convert or after they've been hit over and over again, because it's not a, a single touch attribution from social, it's building that over time between your email list and between them seeing the content on there. Dennis, We'll interject here. Uh, so if you're B2B, it looks like half of you guys are not doing ads yet. So there's a chicken and the egg saying, how much money should I spend? Look at how you guys are performing in email. What is your average click-through? What is your cost per click? What is a lead worth? What happens when the salespeople qualify them and their sales qualify? How long is that funnel cycle? Does it take 90 days? Does it take you know, 18 months? It's going to be different for everybody. You're going to take the stuff, like Alex is talking about, that's already working. If it's already working in paid search, if it's already working in direct mail or email or display or conferences or you know, whatever it is, take, you can take those audiences and you can import them into Facebook. That's what custom audiences are. We think the most important thing on Facebook in 2014 is custom audiences. It doesn't even cost you anything to do the import. You can import email addresses, phone numbers, you can do the native retargeting, which is called website custom audiences. If you're not doing these things, man, it's like cheating. It's the same thing as brand bidding. If you do all those things and you are able to match these people who you already have, who've already touched you, who've already you know, got their email, you export out of Salesforce or whatever, then you can hit them with any of this kind of content. Then you create the lookalikes. That is where you're going to be able to say, look, if I know in AdWords, I can get a lead for 50 bucks and an opportunity, you know, maybe one in 10, $500, whatever your conversion is, you can approximate the same thing and be pretty smart about it because however your retargeting is performing, whether it's through Google's retargeting, you can expect to be better on Facebook. That way you don't lose your skin in B2B where you have to step out on a limb and say, hey, you know, I'd like to do a test and then your butt's on the line on whether it's going to work or not, right? You know this is going to work if you start with those audiences that are already working. So tying in all of those audiences, bringing it into the viral cycle where you start off with that seed content which supports the goal that you've identified, created, and want to achieve. Bring that to the middle of funnel engagement and that's again where you're amplifying that content to the press, to the people in your industry that need to see it, to your top fans, to your email list, to the people that have already come to your website and shown the interest like Dennis was explaining so that at the very bottom of the funnel, for the conversion process, people have already seen and been exposed to the content, to your message, to what you stand for, so that when it comes to making that decision, it's a lot easier. And you can break down the engagement. We have an engagement model here where you can break down 
the quality of the engagement. So it starts all the way at the all the way at the beginning with the fans to organic reach times the viral reach and then the paid factor as well. So the amplification between the organic viral reach and then the, the people that engage with the post, how many of them have created a like, comment, or share, which that is defined as a story or a storyteller. And then you can see the quality of the engagement based on how many stories they've created. So that's how you break that down. But it comes back to making sure that your web, social, and email are all tied together because that's where you're going to get the most power and get the most touches that will help at the bottom of the funnel to make sure that people convert. So the previous slide, the reason why that's important to you is not because there's formulas, but if you're not getting engagement in social, you want to understand why that is. Is it because your audience is too small or maybe you need to pay for your reach, right? If you're B2B, you kind of have to pay, but it's okay because you're doing workplace targeting, you're targeting people who've already been to your site, it's okay. And with CPG, you want to drive engagement, of course, if you're selling sugar water and things that don't require deep engagement and a lot of people doing a decision, right, for a $100,000 product or, you know, whatever, that kind of thing. But, you know, there is a conversion that doesn't even result in engagement. We see all the time, if we have any Marketo folks here, they can tell you that that's true, that they'll spill over into Google. They'll see an article they'll see a third-party endorsement, they'll see that you're speaking at a conference, they'll see whatever that you got a new product release, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to put out there at different points in the funnel, they'll see that and then they're more likely to come visit you at the trade show booth. They're more like, your other marketing channels are going to be more effective. We don't know of a great way on how to measure that in B2B because just like everyone here, the, you're only getting, right, maybe a few dozen hits to your site every day, but man, it's not about how many, it's, you're not trying to sell Red Bull, you know, you're trying to reach a very targeted audience and sometimes just getting the impression, this is the only time we'll argue that reach is important. Sometimes getting that impression spills over if you have the right people with the right content. Making sure you're allocating an appropriate test budget to this so that there's additional impact on these other channels, like Dennis was saying. So in the trade shows and, and when you're presenting in paid search or when there's a brand bidding or in remarketing, all of these will see an overall lift and and in the split test we've done, people that have seen the messaging in social have two or three times more improved the click-through rate inside of email. And additional information and a framework to follow of diagnose, set up, test, and scale because you want to allocate that test budget and then scale up the things that are working. And this is what typically works in e-commerce and heavy direct marketing folks, but you absolutely can do this even if you have a dollar a day. All you have to do you don't have to make new content, just take, take stuff that's third party endorsed, right, where your CEO is interviewed, or maybe you as the person who's in charge of social, I see a lot of the people here are in charge of the social channel, which is fantastic, right? You've got to be the expert. If you're not comfortable being the content marketer and positioning yourself as a reporter, because you basically have to, to be able to generate that content, you interview them, they interview you, and then you promote that using workplace targets to your lead forms or webinars or whatever it is you're trying to collect information, demo of your product, right? If you're not doing that, no amount of software or content or amplification is going to fix this. So you can still follow this process. This is Facebook's own slide on how to do things from a smart lead gen e-commerce direct marketing standpoint. You can still do this even if you only have a couple hours a week and whatever tiny budget you might have or, you know, some people... 10,000 a month is tiny, some people 10 bucks a month is tiny, right? But you absolutely can do this and we've been doing this for a few years and the most common thing we get is B2B. Or, oh, I don't have the budget and the people and all, you absolutely can do this. All you need is using, you just use existing content you already have, target against existing audiences you have by importing them in or lookalike audiences or just imagine you're a PR person. Imagine, you know, who would you be interviewing? Who would you want to see your stuff? Don't think of yourself as a salesperson. Think of yourself as a PR person because you're an expert. Who needs to see your stuff? If you tie those things together, and that's the whole diagnosis and setup, then you run these tests at just a few dollars. If it works, scale it up. If your industry is super small, you might only spend whatever, 20, 50 bucks a month or whatever it might be because there's just not that many people, right? I mean, how big is that audience? Even if you want to spend, there's some guys, they want to spend 10 grand a month. They can't because the audience that is only $500 a month across Facebook and LinkedIn and Google and all that, right? So if you're super targeted, don't worry about that. So, and you'll see that we have a few action items that you can take for these things and we'll go 
into the way we optimize ads is a process called MAA and metrics analysis action. So at the very top, you need to look at those top level metrics. Did those things matter? What went up or down? And the thing that you can do in just a couple of minutes in targeting the right media, the right industry experts, your top fans, and even expanding it out using graph search and finding other additional interests that are lateral interests associated with the things that your fans care about. And it comes and goes to tying your audiences together, using a funnel, so building that audience at the top, engaging them in the middle of the funnel, which is most important and where we've allocated a lot of budget in B2B, and then at the bottom, they're ready to convert. So you guys know how retargeting works, right? Where you go to some site and you look at a pair of red shoes and those red shoes follow you around all over the internet. You look at a hotel, it follows you on, hey, come back and book, you know, 200 bucks a night or whatever, right? That's the same thing here with social. The fact that Alex is talking about tying together website, email, and social is not some concept. It's something you can actually do. Because if you have traffic on Facebook, whether you bought it or they're fans and they see your stuff, and they come to a landing page, you absolutely should throw Google's remarketing. If they come in through a search result and they go to your website, you should have Facebook's remarketing and bring them back, back to social. And they're not a fan, ask them to become a fan. If they're a fan but they're not on your list, ask them to join your email. If they're on one but not the other, you can tie those all together. You don't need software. It's not hard. When you have all those audiences, you move into the middle, which is that funnel there, which is primarily engagement. If you don't have a big audience, which is what typically happens in B2B, then you have to build reach. But it's not fans for the sake of, I just need 10,000 fans. It's because you want to reach those right people. Maybe you only need a couple hundred fans. Maybe you don't need any fans at all because you're just driving them straight to the site or to the conference or to your event or whatever that might be. And then as you spiral out, the combination of tying these audiences together into the funnel is what we call the viral spiral, right? And that means there are things you do to build your audience as you build momentum because you have content outlets that you publish on and you interview other people and interview you and you amplify that, then you start to get them to see you as an authority, right? Pretend you're the press, pretend you're a magazine, pretend you're the person who is writing about this other stuff, put yourself as a journalist, not as a marketer, then all of a sudden you see that SEO and social and landing page optimization and all that kind of stuff is really just direct marketing. It's nothing more than word of mouth. And we've packaged up all of these materials for you. And, and you can go to blitzmetrics.com. You can see our 300-page implementation guide of what we've done to drive leads. So just go to blitzmetrics.com. You can find that information there. Just download it. Everything we have and done, we are about open sharing and thought leadership. So we have to practice what we preach. So we have to produce content just like everyone else here. So if you have questions, let us know, right? We will answer questions here in the chat. You can also message us on Facebook, you know, fb.com slash blitzmetrics. You can hit up Alex or myself, alex at blitzmetrics.com or Dennis at blitzmetrics. We answer everyone's questions. It might take a couple of days, but we will answer everyone's questions. Yeah. So thank you guys for uh, listening to us and we'll Look forward to the Q&A here at the end of the session, and we'll pass it off to Paul. Hey, thanks so much, Alex. Uh, it was a great presentation, and let's take it from the own. I would like to tell uh, the audiences that we actually use uh, Facebook for our own B2B strategy, and we actually do it pretty simple. First, we have got the list from our sales manager of the companies that we want to work with. And the second thing is the targeting for people who work in those companies. We're also targeting, we, we get emails of the people that we are willing to work with, and then we upload those emails into custom audiences. And then we basically present them some useful content. The useful content could be a PDF file to download. Uh, it could be some case study. So some kind of content that could drive some engagement. And that's why I feel that together with Facebook marketing, it's very important to prepare some pages that you drive people to decide to download some content and leave the content information. And there are kind of basic rules that are very much needed for, uh, for you guys to, to you know, build and design your pages. First of all, think about the relevance of your message. The message, like with PPC, the message on your Facebook ad and the message on the landing page that you design needs to be a very, very similar. If you promise to increase the landing page conversions on your ad, the same thing needs to be on your landing page. Make sure that all your Facebook ads and the general banner ads 
are done with the same styling as the main site. So if, if you choose the different colors, etc., that might drive the customer away from the landing page. Make sure that you choose a very clear header for your landing page, header that explains what you guys present and what's, what you guys are about. So for example, here, SMS enable your apps, a very clear message that immediately catches user attention, and it's very easy to understand what those guys do without reading any other, other content. Also, make sure that you present some sort of trust, some sort of guarantee messages if you're able to do that. So for example, on this particular landing page, as you can see, beside of the main handler, uh, main tag, we have also we raise the score at least 50 points for your money back. So very something that really helps people to trust you more. Um, also, you can definitely play with headers and make sure that you explain them why to join if you have any kind of sign up uh, for your startups. Uh, easiest way to block. And as you can see here, it's very clear, uh, very clear messaging uh, from the header a very similar message for the call to action button. Sign up now and start forcing. So those header message and the call to action message needs to be very, very relevant. Also, people are very scared about this very you know, difficult sign up process. So make sure that you repeat free, fast, secure at whenever pages that you have. So if it's a really you know, short sign up, make sure that you can sign up in you know, a couple of seconds. This usually will drive more you know, sign-ups within your startups. Uh, if you describe some features, uh, make sure that you list uh, features not from development perspective like usually startups doing. Uh, basically explain how those features that you build help people to, to save the time or money or life or whatever. So very important to be able to Take a look at your landing page, not from the founder perspective, but from the particular visitor or user perspective. Maybe you can explore with your friends what would be the best way. Uh, you know, usually it takes like maybe five users to test and try. And maybe you can really organize some survey and then adjust the landing page messages according to the feedback from the user. And make sure, I know that most of the startups, they provide a lot of features, but try to pre-select maybe two or three the most relevant to the audiences that you're trying to engage. And those you know, features must be very well presented on the page, clean and clear. So uh, also, there might be a real balance on the landing pages between the text images and the video. Video drives conversions, and if you if you, you know, get a chance to build a viral video uh, that really engages people, this might be a good uh, social, uh, social engagement from the Facebook. Um, also, if you're trying to drive traffic from multiple different channels to the same landing page, maybe it's a good idea to split this traffic immediately from the front page uh, by having like very easy call to action when the person might choose the specific type, who is this client, and probably drive himself to a much easier sign up process. Like here on the sample, you see homeowner, commercial, and the renter. So you basically split out by the specific goal and split the traffic to the other pages. Uh, the next thing that I recommend you is just to make sure that your landing page is clear. There are not much navigation that drives a person away. So that's, that's a very basic advice. And we built such kind of things that are very clear. So for example, for the uh, engine jar, the startup from San Francisco Bay Area, we created a very, very easy form. And uh, so in, in most cases, such kind of easy form, very, you know, very clear form, will work much, much better than if you drive them to your you know, particular main website. Maybe you can design the landing pages when, sometimes when you drive um, customer attention to specific you know, lead gen form. So small, you know, small messages or like here, see why industry leaders choose IDI. So that's kind of thing that drives people to the form, drives personal attention to the form. That might be a good uh, design. 
uh, also make sure that you actually have only one call to action on your landing page. So on the left side, you can see how Microsoft creates so many buttons on the page. For the landing page, really, you, you have to have maybe like one button, or maybe you can, if it's a long tail form, maybe you can repeat the same button multiple times on the page, but it might, it might have the same layout, it might have the same message. So uh, keep in mind that you know, less call to action, uh, the better result will be. Also make sure that you can, you can actually play with call to action in terms of the size, the colors, and the message. Usually what I would recommend uh, is that the call to action stand out from the rest of the design. So um, like here, for example, how bookmarking is really you know, stand out from the yellow background. It's, it's really you know, very easy to find and it brings customer attention to this particular button. Um, you can also try to play in you know, so, some startups, they, uh, they need some sort of privacy for the user. So make sure that you um, pitch with messages like, uh, this is a free trial, no credit card required. That kind of messages are usually you know, help people, help to convince these people to fill out the form or click the call to action button. Uh, make sure that you, you know, include into your um, e-learning page some trust components. The trust components that could be mentioned uh, in the major um, magazines like New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and stuff like that. Maybe you're already working with some sort of big companies that people actually recognize pretty well. Maybe you can put some logos there. Maybe you can have like testimonials from the particular client. Um, usually, if you if you have like testimonials, it makes sense to maybe embed some photos of the specific uh, image, uh, a specific photo of the person. That might be a good idea to include into your landing page. Also, I would recommend to always you know, showcase the proof of expertise. Um, you know, maybe you can mention that this particular software or product used by multiple like, other companies or multiple users that you're in the good uh, company that other people actually using that. People like you are already using that. So the design might be really you know, different. The way how you present it, it's, it's already up to you. But the idea is just to make sure that people feel very comfortable with you guys feel that whenever a problem they have, you can solve that. Uh, I would say that it's, it's, a, it's a great idea to include you know, the logos of the companies in the native colors because on many landing pages I see that they actually present those logos at a great scale. What I would pre prefer is just to keep logos in the native color because these, those brands, they actually put a lot of money into uh, into the marketing, into the brand recognition, so people actually recognize them much, much better. Um, I would say that the form, the major thing is the form, it needs to be very, very simple. You have to ask only very, you know, very um, small amount of details, maybe like name and the email. So make sure if you need a very, very big form, maybe you can split out the steps. Uh, if you're actually doing Facebook marketing and send people to your startup, you know, sign up process from the Facebook, maybe it's a good chance to include sign up using the Facebook uh, button. That may help you to, you know, drive uh, more conversions. You can probably avoid any kind of username fields. Maybe you can just keep, you know, the privacy is gone. So people, they're willing to, to use email address as a username. So the less fields will be on the landing page, the better performance of this page will be. Um, also, maybe you can think about the partnership with them, you know, with other companies that you can connect with uh, the Open ID. So, for example, Podio, which is kind of team building tool, project management tool, they actually can, they think about other other systems that the potential clients might use, and they added the Open ID Connect sign up with GoToMeeting. So that was a really great decision because this way you can leverage the audiences of the specific competitor and let people to sign up pretty quick. Um, also, I, I, I would recommend you to, you know, some, some sort of startups, they still have like repeat password fields. I would recommend you to avoid that. People just 
um, people just leave the password information very, you know, very easy, and they they don't have to grasp. I mean, make sure the password is really, really, you know, uh, there are not much logic behind of the password field. People don't have to think about what kind of password they have to use. Uh, don't challenge people with the password. That's my, you know, that's my idea. Uh, if you need, you know, to present long form, maybe you can split down by specific points and the specific steps, like one, two, three. And if it's a really necessary for you to ask multiple, you know, screens, maybe you can add skip it button and let people to sign up and try your startup product easy, uh, and then they can fill out the rest of the details right along. Uh, maybe you can also, you know, very easy from the CSAS, maybe you can highlight the specific fields when they selected. Very nice, that's, pro that's basically, you know, drives customer attention to this particular field, and people will fill out this much, much quickly. Also, you can do an automatic real-time check, for example, for the username or um, if people have to leave the email address that is available or you know, some sort of channel page. You know, make sure that you communicate with the person who is you know, who's filling the landing page and let people know that you care about them. Uh, what I would suggest is for the error, if, if there any error message happens, make sure those messages are very clearly specified. Uh, connect a specific message to a specific cell that is strong. That helps people to, to fix the mistake pretty fast and go further. Uh, in terms of the plans, a lot of startups actually use a premium model, you know, um, some of them using the membership and subscriptions. So what I would recommend you to probably task the different location of the plans. You definitely uh, make sure that you list only the main features, and then if people want and, and showcase to user how those plans are actually um, compared to each other, and if there are any feature that is common for all those plans, maybe you can list them below and see how read more here appear. That might be a good idea for you to simplify uh, to simplify the page the plan selection page. And as you can see here, which is a good sample, when you know, the sign up button is actually according to the color of the header. So that, that, that's really very important things to, to remember. And uh, another, another sample is if you want to present your plans and make sure that you um, market long-term commitments, long-term subscription, make sure that you, can, you, you promote that. So here is a great sample when you have monthly one year and two year subscription, um, and people they can you know they can choose the cheapest plan here, which is which is kind of um, probably not the cheapest one because they pay in advance for the one year. But that makes sense to include uh, because people sometimes they they are ready to make the decision immediately because it's still the trial but they, they make the commitment to stay longer with you guys. Uh, I would suggest that if you still have to charge the credit card information, one of the things related to the, you know, the, the credit card for the bidding, etc., make sure that you define what exactly will happen before people click on the button to pay. So um, if, if you have like a 30 day trial, make sure that you, you know, mention when this trial uh, will be disconnected or when the next bidding day will be. That's information very important for the user. And if, you, if by any chance you're still using like email account activation, uh, email verification, I would recommend you to remove this because that might delay for about like 20% of your accounts. Uh, because of you know problems with Gmail and junk mail, etc. Or if you really need to verify emails, make sure that you include the feature that helps people to resend verification email, and maybe you can resend to the different email address. Maybe then they, they can add your email address into the save list and then receive the confirmation. Um, 
make sure that whenever page you design, many case, in many cases we recommend that all the information will be above the fold. But for some startups, for some learning stages, we might, when the people need to stay longer just to make the decision or compare some products, we can test with long tail pages here. And what is very important for me to for us to remember is that the thank you page is really important as well. The final step is uh, most of the people that actually ignore the thank you page and they drive a lot of attention to the first page. The thank you page is very important because it helps you to convert people even more. They can subscribe, they can uh, watch the specific video, or they can um, you know, like your Facebook page and so on because they really give you information. So they give you some sort of credit and it makes, it, it makes sense to just help them to continue engaging with the company. So I would say if you can, don't stop with one learning page design. Make sure you test maybe two or three different options. And uh, just some, some cases that we had for the B2B, for the B2C software, for those two, two forms, even with small changes, the second, the second, the right, you know, form produced much, much better results, about 24% better conversions. For this particular page, we had originally form on the first step, and then we decided that we split out the entire process by two steps. So on the first step, they release about the features, and then they click button, and then on the second page, they fill out the form, and. This, this option, the second option, is uh, about 15% more lead um, we generated. Also, another sample is when even small change within the bottom helps to increase the conversion rate by about 7%. So exactly the same form, just different call to action color and different call to action message help to increase the lead chance. So, and then the final thing is like in both the trust and personality test, what I would recommend you guys to just try different kind of landing pages and see how they perform. Make sure you integrate Facebook conversion pixel um, because it, it helps you to really you know, understand how those you know, Facebook things work for you or not. And um, I think I'm, I'm past the, the information right now for the organizer to, to take some questions and I will be happy to reply. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you for this great presentation. Thanks, uh, Dennis and Alex, for joining us as well. Looks like we have some time for Q&A. If you have any questions for our speakers today, please type them in in the chat box um, located on the lower uh, corner of the screen. So let's go ahead and get started with questions. Um, I thought Alex mentioned something interesting here, and I want him to elaborate on that a little bit. Alex, when you, you mentioned using the, your mailing list in combination of uh, Facebook ads, can you uh, talk a little bit about that and specifically um, how do you uh, actually upload your Facebook, uh, your mailing list into the Facebook? Is it, is it a feature like that or is it something that yep. I misunderstood? I can go ahead and show you that live if you'd like here. I'm sharing my desktop now. You just go to facebook.com slash ad slash manage then just go into one of your ad accounts, and then inside of there you can click on Audiences and then click Create Audience, and that will allow you to use Data File Custom Audience. So you can then upload a CSV of the emails and then it will match back. In B2B we see a 20 to 30 percent match rate. Now another one that we love is Custom Audiences for your website where you drop in the Custom Audience pixel onto the pages of your site and then you can break down different custom audiences based on pages that they visited, a thank you page, and you can say for that custom audience. So those are the two that we love to use. And you can even do this for mobile apps. And Facebook has made a lot of changes. We sent two engineers to F8, Facebook's developer conference, and there are changes going into mobile, more tracking, mobile like button, and app integration natively through app links. So what this means for a B2B marketer is even if your list is small, you can upload that or your phone numbers or the pixel and it will function. It will make Facebook, in all of Facebook a retargeting platform which is even in the mobile, and then you can create lookalike audiences where based on your fans or based on your 
you've got your email list segmented, you can create audiences against each of those. Your best customers by vertical, by where they live, by whatever it is. And those actually work very well. If you tried this six months ago and said, hey, this kind of sucked, it did. That's because Facebook didn't have optimized CPM, which is basically bidding to a conversion. So now you can bid to a conversion and they're smart about it and you can tie it in with these different audiences. We, that's the training guide we're talking about. If we went too fast here and you're confused, just go through our training and do it. Great. Thank you so much, Dennis. And this actually goes along well um, as we start talking to, about B2B uh, with a question from Sarah. I know that you uh, answered it personally in the chat box, but I think it would be beneficial for all to uh, know the answer. Uh, can you provide some examples for building a fan base uh, specifically for a B2B? I know it's a broad question, but if you can just give us yeah. a, few, a few tips yeah. here. The best way to think about it is I'm showing my desktop here. It's not about necessarily how many fans you have. You have to think about audience engagement and conversion. So fans is at the very top, and the larger your fan base is, the bigger your reach is. But remember, you're not selling potato chips and sugar water. In B2B, you're trying to reach a very narrow audience. If you pollute that audience by doing things like giving away an iPad just because, hey, you know, whoever clicks like here will enter a drawing to win something, don't do that because that's going to screw up your user base. It's going to screw up your edge rank. It's going to screw up what shows up in the news feed. That said, determine how big that potential customer base is in the real world. What market share do you have? How big is your list relative to how many people you could potentially reach? And then start to reach those people when you can see what your percentage is. If you can get up to 20 or 30 percent, then you're doing super well. Look at what Marketo and Infusionsoft are doing. Your cost per fan, if you do a page like ad or click like, I don't recommend doing that, but if if for some reason your boss is all over that and you just have to do that, it will probably be in the 2 to $5 range. If your user base is international, it might be proportionately less. Like in Latin America and certain parts of Asia, it might be $0.50 cents to a dollar. You know, that said, it varies by industry. If you're selling to doctors or people who run hospitals or senior vice presidents at banks or stuff like that, it might be 10 or $15. We ran a campaign for American Express to business owners and we were getting fans at 4 or $5 and Carl's Jr. is $0.05. Cents, so it's very different. So if you need to acquire fans, just because the boss or whatever cares about how many fans you have relative to the other guy, fine, do it. But try to do it with as much quality as you can, which means your cost per fan is higher. Let me leave you with one simple thought on that. When people decide to click the like button, is it because they know your brand or because you said something funny? Maybe. You know, silly cat photos on Friday. It's really because they like what you have to say and you've built a relationship. So actually, you have to do, they see your stuff over time until like or follow you on Twitter or follow you on LinkedIn, right? So by actually doing a really good job in, of engagement, you're going to build your fan base as a secondary effect, but it's going to be a higher cost per fan. But you should be okay with that because of quality versus quantity. To answer the Great. question before there, I'll scroll. I'm going to scroll up. So when you upload your list using a custom audience, it's not that you can contact through a message. It's only using that as an audience to run ads against. So you can run those in the right-hand side, news feed, mobile news feed, et cetera. But it's only done through the ad platform. Yep. Then, yep. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for clarifying that. And we have a question from uh, Darja here and I think we can direct it uh, to all of our presenters today. Uh, I'm interested in your opinion. Uh, what is the best practice to drive in traffic online in B2C specifically? Are these coupons, group deals, vouchers? Is there something else that uh, she's missing and any general advice that you can give specifically on driving uh, traffic for B2C? Yes, yeah, so we'll give a much look at Traffic times conversion equals revenue. So you can drive a ton of traffic, but it doesn't convert, then it's no good. You know, Paul's an expert in landing page optimization to getting conversion rates to, to go up. But when you have things like deals and vouchers and things where you're giving an artificial discount, 20% off, $10 off, buy one, get one free, you know, coupons all about buy one, get one free, that kind of thing, then you have brand erosion based on a lower lifetime value and also a lower perceived value because people then become trained on a discount and the friends of these other people become trained on price instead of on upon a you know, better quality or because, you know, it's like MacBook Pros, they don't go on sale by Apple, that kind of thing. So we know in the short run it works. There's 
probably 50 or 60 social plugins that you can use that help administer contests. I really like things like Agora uh, Pulse, and we know that some of our other friends, like an Infusionsoft, you know, Grow Social, Heyo, all these guys will allow you to administer social traffic. Where if you tweet, like I think what is it called? Tweet, uh, pay with a tweet, for example. Dot com. You yeah. can also uh, do the Starbucks coffee thing. There's a lot of ways where people can, you can, uh, they can like or enter a contest to win an iPod or something like that. But in general, in B two B. We don't see that. Okay, someone's asking for, for I'm sorry, on, on B2C. Yeah, it works. It drives a lot of traffic, top of bottom of funnel, but just watch for what the impact is on conversion rate over time. Apps are great. Mobile apps are fantastic. If, you can, if you're in B2C and you're a big enough brand that you can afford and legitimately build a mobile app, your cost per install will probably be 20 to 40 cents. And it's fantastic, especially, like Alex mentioned, all the new things that came, they came out with, which is basically marketing automation, right? So the whole point of that is to say, if someone's installed your app, but they have not been to it in a while, or they leveled up, or they just completed something, then you can do, you can nudge them, right? All the stuff that you can do in those areas, you, you can hit them with. So mobile is fantastic. Facebook's traffic, 50% of it's now mobile. Great. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, definitely makes sense. Here's one question for Paul just came in. Paul, what one actionable tip uh, that you, you can give as a landing page expert specifically on, uh, for someone who uses Facebook ads? How, how would you optimize your page? And I, I know that you covered a lot, but what would be one uh, major tip that you would give to our audience today on that? Well, I would recommend for sure to just to do some testing. That's, that, that's the major one. But uh, for the B2B, I can probably send in within the chat uh, what we basically promote. Um, so this is our client, recommenderstrends.com, and uh, we, this is B2B business. And when we promote them through the Facebook, we design the special landing pages for the different messages. The first message could be, um, see how trends help SkyMall to increase the conversion rate by 10%. So there was some kind of message that engaged people, and uh, that ad on the Facebook worked pretty well because we, we've got a good, uh, good leads from this content. And we target them for the most you know, successful e-commerce brands. The second, the second uh, option for us, we created maybe six or seven different PDF files that that's probably relevant to the business that we are trying to target. And then we created special landing pages to design, uh, to, to download those content. So like, um, like Dennis and Alex mentioned uh, from the beginning, the content for the B2B, it's Facebook helps you to basically broadcast about your content in a very, very efficient way. It's not like what you do for um, PPC campaign. It's, it's basically to build a brand awareness plus distribute, to distribute the content to other people. Let people download this for free. You set up you as a brand. You, you, you showcase your, yourself as an expert in the specific field. So as you can see here, uh, the specific landing page that we designed, it was two steps landing page that converts pretty well. And then we target to major e-commerce companies and this way we acquire some contacts. And then once you get this list, then you can help your sales manager to, and you, you can engage those people with more relevant information. And then maybe in three or six months, you can close the deal. That's, that's the way it works basically for the promoter and for all of our B2B clients. Awesome. Thank you so much, Paul. And thank you, Dennis, for a quick demo on how easy it is to set up uh, a Facebook ad. Uh, definitely a useful insight for all of uh, for our audience today. Looks like uh, unfortunately we're running out of time, so I would uh, give e each of the speaker a few minutes to uh, give a final advice and tell a little bit about themselves, how uh, how our audience can find you, and then we'll just um, we'll see you soon at the next um, B2C webinar. So let's start with uh, let's start with Alex. All right, so I'll give you a quick overview. I've been doing online marketing since 14, but the bigger mission with Blitzmetrics is creating jobs for 
college students. We are creating a movement called the Unturn Movement where we're giving students real world experience by bringing them in and matching them to enterprise companies. So we, we named a few. We work with Marketo, Infusionsoft, Jack Dan, for years, all the way down to small biz. And we match up students in their passion area so they can work on clients that they really care about, that they know a lot about, they know a lot about the industry and giving them that opportunity. An example I love to give is a student. Now he works for us. His name's Aaron. He's six foot five. He loves the NBA. And he loves playing basketball. And he's gotten to work on the Golden State Warriors and launch a campaign with the Houston Rockets and ZTE, a phone manufacturer. And our job and our goal, our mission and vision is to solve the problem of generating leads for enterprise and small businesses and to create jobs for students. That is our goal with Blitzmetrics. Great. Thank you so much, Alex. Let's, let's move to Dennis. You can't move anywhere in B2B lead gen by using tricks. There is no substitute for demonstrating expertise and sharing it. There is no way to get around this I, or any of this, it's not really the framework that we're talking about. It will work. It, is, it, is not, it does not require a lot of time. If you're in charge of social, if you're in charge of lead gen and people are holding you to the numbers and people are saying it's not really possible in social to do this because you know, these are complex deals and I can't find my audience, then it's really a matter of targeting. And you'll probably find, especially if you're an agency, I see a lot of agency people here, that you're going to spend more time explaining things, explain, you know, educating people on how, you know, why you need to tie in with their website and email marketing, why you need to be aware of what the marketing calendar is because you're going to use those and leverage those assets and multiply. Everything is retargeting. So if you're not doing these things, we have that checklist. It, I think it's eight items that you need to do. You need to tie together your Google Analytics and your Facebook ads and your Facebook you know, page and all these other pieces, right? All, all these other accounts. In the same way that if you're running AdWords, of course you're going to tie that with your Google Analytics. You're going to tie it with your webmaster tools. So everything's coming together. You're going to tie all your content together. You're going to tie all your audiences together. You're going to tie all your traffic together. That, like what most people in B2B are, or even on the agency side or B2C where they're confused. Because every day there's this new thing with Facebook. Every day there's this new tool. Someone forwards you this one thing. Hey, go do this. I don't have enough time. I'm too busy doing these other things. And I'm trying to convince the other people I work with to collaborate with me, right? So if you're in that space of not enough money, not enough time, too many things going on, then we hope this will be a good solution for you. We're not even trying to sell you anything. I mean, we sell consulting packages too. But that's not why we're here. We're here because we want to share and we want to see your feedback. If you have a story you want to share, you know, Alex writes for Inside Facebook. He writes for FBPPC. He speaks all over the place. Let us know about that and we'd love to interview you. Great. Thank you so much, Dennis. Uh, and finally, Paul, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, the last uh, advice for our attendees? Yeah, so my advice for when you have a business like B2B especially, I would recommend you to pay attention to conversions. And the first step to do that is I would recommend you one software that I'm personally passionate about. It's uh, metrica.yandex.com. It's an amazing tool for uh, heat mapping analytics that actually record every single visit, visit uh, to your site or your landing page. And this way you can actually see the video of user behavior on your site. Uh, try this out. And if, if you will have any questions about this conversions, heat mapping, A-B testing, including the Facebook links, just drop me an email and you know, we can chat more. We can just do some personalized presentation for you guys, free of charge. <laughs> Great. Awesome, Paul. Thank you so much uh, to all of our speakers. Thank you for our attendees for joining us today. Uh, we will see you again uh, next week at the Business to Community webinars. And everybody, uh, have a great day. Thanks, everyone.